Story time, it's 2015. Brendan Teets is about to step on the platform for his first sanctioned powerlifting meet in a legitimate federation, the USPA. It's in Grass Valley, California. Jasmine Garcia is filming this for her YouTube channel and I was having a hell of a day. I was squatting huge PRs of 50 pounds. I was benching PRs, I was deadlifting PRs. I had totaled over 1500 pounds at my first legitimate sanctioned meet and I was on top of the world. The reason I'm telling you this story is right after this meets, I got heavily influenced by the powerlifting community because I fell in love with powerlifting and I started making the number one mistake in my training that I'm gonna share with you that I think the majority of powerlifting and strength-based trainees who try to improve their squat, bench, and deadlift make all the time. What you need to understand is that I came from a very diverse background. I was coached by Alberto Nunez for years, actually all the way up until that meet. He was a natural bodybuilder and he really resonated with me because I was like, I want to be natural. I want to look like him. Now, full disclosure, I'm no longer natural. I'm on GH and testosterone currently as of this video, but back then I was natural and I was really into that. And I hit that 1500 pound total natural. I did all that stuff natural. I looked pretty fucking good too. But here's the thing. I think that diversity, that background being coached by a bodybuilder slash guy who's into some strength stuff. And then also learning from other people in the industries that were not exactly your typical power lifter served me really well until that point. And then right around 2016, I started integrating into the powerlifting scene because I was coaching it more and more. I started my coaching career in 2014, if you can believe that. And I've been coaching since then. And I would say from 2016 to 2020, I made this mistake, not just with myself, but with clients. What is that mistake? Too much specificity. So what you need to understand is that most coaches at the highest level in powerlifting, including myself, when I used to coach powerlifting a lot more rigorously, we get genetic freaks. We get people who are basically 5'5", five five, super thick joints. They are built to move weight from point A to point B. They are blessed with the ability to train highly specific. You see this in most sports. You see body types that arise to be ideal for basketball, for baseball, for powerlifting. The list goes on. There's kind of an ideal genetic makeup, whether it be mental or physical, for really any endeavor you do. And when you coach at the highest level and when you guys follow these people on Instagram, you're really seeing an echo chamber of what works for the best lifters and not necessarily what works for you. I happen to be six foot and lanky. A lot of the things that I do for clients don't necessarily work well for me, especially if they come from this genetic makeup. This is gonna be the same for you. And specificity is probably the number one thing, which came in for me right around 2020. This was when I had the realization and I started developing what I call flow training. Now, flow training is another word for me to get around saying the word functional because functional training has been butchered and so many people freak out when I say functional that they start to get their panties in a bunch and they say there's no such thing as functional. So I just renamed it. We're gonna call it flow training. And flow training is something I do on the side of my powerlifting. Now, I still love powerlifting and I still coach powerlifters. I still coach people who are hybrid lifters and that's not going anywhere. I'm not telling you to do this instead of your powerlifting, I'm saying this will benefit you if you happen to be like me and you get a lot of burnout, injuries, and problems that seem to arise on a never-ending basis. So what is flow training? Flow training is any locomotion-based activity or any movement-based training. This could be ATG work. You guys follow the ATG system, I'm sure, here on YouTube. To me, that mobility training that he talks about is flow training. It's also yoga. It's also cardio-based training, whether it be sleds and assault bike or just running and doing some kind of light biking, right? It's anything where you're moving, you're getting a sustained heart rate, and you're flowing with the workouts, hence the name. This is one of the most important variables you can train when you're lifting really heavy. Why? Well, first off, the reason I mentioned height earlier is when you're six foot and lanky, your connective tissues get incredibly more beat up than someone who's 5'5". Five five. They just have better leverages. They don't get pushed into positions the way a six foot lanky lifter does. Even if you're not super tall, if you feel beat up, especially in your joints, connective tissues, your muscles tear really often and easy, this is a sign that you're also probably someone 
that's dealing with issues that can be resolved by this flow training. Now, I wanna get specific on the details here. Because flow training is so broad, I have to cover all the different adaptive processes we're trying to train when we do flow training. This first one's gonna be more aimed towards the cardio or locomotion-based activities like sled work, assault bike, jump rope, whatever you do, and those are actually the three I do, is sled work, assault bike, and jump rope. Now, the first adaptive process that's gonna be hugely beneficial for your body is sustained heart rate elevation and blood flow. We talked about in my recovery video from a couple weeks ago, how important blood circulation is for removing free radicals and improving your recovery. Missing out on cardio is one of the most detrimental factors to high inflammation rates and dealing with recovery issues. Now, with that said, if your goal is to build muscle, you shouldn't be just jogging you know, five times a week for miles at a time. You need to do progressive cardio in a program the way you'd progress weight training and you just find a sustainable amount to ensure you're getting a heart rate that's sustained in elevation and improving your blood circulation and improving recovery. And the way you'll know is really simple. You're gonna feel better when you're lifting. You won't feel like you're tired from running and it's having an interference effect on your lifting. Generally, what I recommend are two to three sessions per week of about 10 to 20 minutes and not going as hard as most people actually want to go. When I do the assault bike, it's a very sustained heart rate. It's not like all out. Same thing with my sled work. I don't do these really heavy grueling where I'm just revving up the CNS. No, this is flow. This is why I call it flow training. You should be, yes, out of breath a little bit. Yes, getting a pump and blood circulation, but something that's more of a constant locomotion rather than an up and down, which you're lifting already is that. You don't need more of that. Second adaptive process we wanna conquer here is concentric only training, which improves the adaptive response is gonna be your tendon and ligament health, as well as just like, again, blood flow to the muscle bellies. So this is mostly gonna be like your sled work and anything where you're getting a lot of concentric base work on like an assault bike or even a stair mill, something that pumps the tendons and legs or arms, whatever muscles you're using with a lot of blood and gets those connective tissues training. I think sled work is probably the best thing for this. This is why in the ATG system, the owner is really obsessed with sled work. It actually works incredibly well at improving your recovery. Specifically concentric only training, aka you know, when you're not going through any eccentric loading can be hugely beneficial for the ligaments and joints. And especially when you're doing all the demanding heavy squats, deadlifts, bench press, it's even harder to make sure those joints stay recovered. So add in some sled work, add in some assault bike, do some jump rope too. It's amazing for the ankles, feet, and calves. Power training is the third adaptive response we're gonna go after here. Now you don't need to be a power athlete. And when I say power, I don't mean power lifting. I mean your rate of force production, how quickly you generate force, which falls into this category of flow training, not how much force. So ironically, powerlifting is called powerlifting, but a better name would be like force lifting or force producing, because we're really not actually increasing power necessarily when we train for powerlifting. We're increasing force production or strength, right? But power is kind of like an athlete. This is gonna be your explosive jumps, your sprints, anything that's gonna be a high CNS drive, but kind of low threshold of force needed to perform the task, okay? So think sprinter in this case. What you wanna do is train this either in your off season or some other time. Now you might say, what does power have to do with recovery or improving your sports performance in powerlifting? I promise you it works. And this is actually something I'm sad I got away from. In my original starting of my training, my, my early lifting career, or whatever you want to call it, I use the conjugate method. Now I'm highly critical of the conjugate method. I don't think it's highly effective, but one aspect that I actually think was effective that most people say was ineffective about the conjugate, this is ironically the thing most people critique about conjugation or, or West Side method, which are really similar, is the dynamic effort work, the power work. I actually think it's hugely beneficial. One, it gives the body a break to do that a couple times a week, and it does actually improve your recovery. I found that to be a very solid truth in my experience. But the second thing it does 
is it really helps with your punch through the sticking point on your big three. And I think this is hugely beneficial to get you past that grindy bench press, especially if you've got long arms. The faster you can clear the sticking point, the less chance you have of dying out. Fourth adaptive process is gonna be slow eccentric work or even isometric work. So this is gonna be things where you're going really slow and controlled. Even if you're doing something like a flat squats with a really slow eccentric and then pushing those knees in an end range and we're going to get to end range work here in a second or if you're doing some isometric work of any kind these are going to be hugely beneficial for your tendons your ligaments and what i consider muscular endurance so this is one of the best ways to prevent muscle tears like you see some of the guys do who joints are just so beat up and dried out from all the heavy lifting and they go do a powerlifting meet and their quad just snaps or something this is going to help prevent that stuff do do some eccentric work, do some isometric work. Fifth adaptive response, I don't know, yell at me if I'm wrong, I forgot where we're at in the filming, but the fifth response I wanna to discuss today is gonna to be end range training. So this is gonna be like anything in the ATG system, but that's just one system of end range training or what I think the owner, I wanna say his name's Ben, I always forget. I think he coins it as mobility training because he sees mobility as not like stretching and flexibility, but rather your access to movement and position. I like that definition, I agree with that. He has his system. I do my own end range training, which is kind of similar, it has overlap to his, we share some ideals, but I kind of train what I'll consider certain like yoga movements and things like that that are loaded. Now it doesn't matter what system you choose, I don't care how you do some end range work, but do some end range work. Do some flat squats, do some ATG split squats, do some hip flexion work, do some crazy, you know, stretched mobility work like a Jefferson curl, do some things that are gonna push your flexibility, push your end range positions, and essentially stabilize and coordinate your body in these really exaggerated ranges of motion. This will be hugely beneficial for your health of your tendons and joints, as well as your stability. The sixth and little final finale that's kind of an addition because it's not really an adaptive response, but do yoga. I think yoga falls into flow training and my new company, Unity, that's gonna be coming out, I'm gonna be helping people design flow programs that will include yoga. And the reason I'm gonna include yoga, it doesn't need to be professional yoga. You don't need to go to hour long classes three or four times a week. You don't need to buy any goofy clothes. Do a 15, 20 minute video on YouTube and do it well. I promise you the benefits to your lifting and your body, you will just feel the second you're done. You'll be like, holy shit, like you just feel great after. I used to laugh at yoga. I was one of those guys who made fun of it on the side. Here's the thing about yoga. Not only does it actually train to end range positions like crazy, like you are gonna be suffering your first few times you get into these positions, but it really improves your body's endurance and capacity in these positions. And I don't have any better way of describing this with some ethereal words as it feels like it opens me up. When I do lifting, it feels like I kinda do this, when I do yoga, it feels like I do this, like I'm open and relaxed and it feels amazing. Now, I started doing yoga a few years ago. I tried to out intellect yoga without, I don't know how to explain what I mean by that, but basically I was like, I don't actually have to follow any video online or any you know yoga professional. Let me just take all the positions and create a program and just do them systematically in a row and hold each position for a certain amount of seconds. Whenever I did that, I got incredibly bored and stopped doing it. I find when I just follow literally free videos on YouTube for 15 to 20 minutes, two to three times per week, my lifting goes way better, I feel healthier, and I also feel not just more recovered, but more grounded. It's something I think is hugely beneficial for your health as well. You don't need to go be an expert. Where people make the wrong move here is they try doing yoga like five times a week for hour-long classes, and they're doing these really deep yin yoga sessions where you're holding positions in ways that you're not gonna be able to do as a lifter unless you wanna chase those adaptations. Do it more as a side hustle, not your main income. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the video today, guys. Flow training is going to be, honestly, I think a way of the future. I think more and more people are going to talk about some amalgamation of this. They won't call it flow training like I do, but you're going to see more YouTubers, more people just talking about functional training.
training in a way that actually makes sense compared to those Joel Seedman types doing all sorts of goofy exercises that don't actually work. Now, I said this in previous videos, I am looking for people who are looking to change their lives around, not just in lifting, we can definitely work on your powerlifting and bodybuilding goals, but I also want to change people's lives in their mind states. I want to teach people how to meditate. I want to teach people how to do flow programs and incorporate those into their training for strength or hypertrophy. I want to help people with vitality practices, whether it's their nutrition and gut health, their sauna work, their ice baths, their grounding, whatever you need to integrate into your life and we'll find a way to do that. I want to change people's lives around with all these integrative practices. That's what my new company is going to be about. Now, I'm going to keep prime strength going because I'm not quitting powerlifting. I love this stuff. But if you're interested in that, I'm offering a discounted rate. Now, with that said, this is not a cheap rate because I'm going to be coming through your life even more than I do with my powerlifting clients. Like this is going to be a really hands-on experience. If you're in college or something, you're probably not going to be able to afford it. But I am offering a discounted rate that'll be much cheaper than when I go live with Unity to literally transform people's lives. If this is something you're interested in, if you struggle with mental issues, with anger, anxiety, depression, if you struggle in life or in lifting, if you need help recovering and your health is getting deteriorated as you age, I can help you out. The reason I know is because I helped myself out and I became passionate about teaching people this. If you're interested, use the coaching diagnostic link in the calendar or excuse me the description box down below you can sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one meeting you don't have to purchase on the meeting i will sell you after you can decide on your own accord after you speak to me if this is something you're interested in that's the video today guys i hope you enjoyed it as always love you guys see you in the next one